We've spent a lot of time talking about the limit of a function at a particular value, but we can also talk about the limit of a function as x goes to infinity or positive infinity. These limits at infinity tell us about the end behavior of the function, instead of just focusing on what's happening as we approach a single point. A limit as x goes to infinity or negative infinity is telling us what's happening at the ends. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We'll also introduce horizontal asymptotes and do several examples of calculating limits at infinity. Chapters are in the description if you want to skip around the video. This is an example from Larson's calculus. You can see the limit of this function as x goes to infinity is 3 because it's getting closer and closer to this line y equals equals 3. Similarly, in this case, as x goes to negative infinity, the function is also approaching that same line y equals 3. So we could write those limit statements like this. The limit of f of x as x goes to infinity equals 3. As x gets bigger and bigger, the function gets closer and closer to 3. Similarly, the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity is 3. As x gets bigger and bigger in the negative direction, the function gets closer and closer to 3. And just as with limits at a point, we can get an idea of limits at infinity by looking at a table of values. In this table, you can see as we plug in bigger and bigger x values, the function is getting closer and closer to 3, suggesting the limit as x approaches infinity is 3. Similarly, as we plug in more and more negative x values, the limit again appears to approach 3. When a function has a limit at infinity or negative infinity, it will look something like this, where it is approaching some horizontal line. And it could be that the function approaches one horizontal line at positive infinity, and it could approach a different horizontal line at negative infinity. Regardless, we have a special name for these lines. The horizontal line a function may approach as x goes to negative or positive infinity is called a horizontal asymptote, very similar to vertical asymptotes. The line y equals l is a horizontal asymptote of a function if the limit of the function at positive or negative infinity is l. This means, of course, that a function could have up to two horizontal asymptotes. It could have one limit at positive infinity and a different limit at negative infinity. It could also be the case that neither limit exists and the function has no horizontal asymptotes. In many ways, limits at infinity are not that different from the limits we've already studied, and some nice basic properties still hold. If we're trying to evaluate the limit of a sum of functions as x goes to infinity, we can break that into the sum of the limits, and similarly for the limit of a product of functions. Let's finish with a few examples. We'll begin with this really simple one using this theorem, 3.10 from Larson's calculus. This tells us how to evaluate some basic limits at infinity. If r is a positive rational number and c is any real number, then the limit as x approaches infinity of c divided by x to the r is equal to zero because the denominator, well, as x goes to infinity, that denominator is just going to get really, really big. So, of course, the limit of this guy is zero. As for x approaching negative infinity, x to the r won't always be defined in that case. If r is one half, for example, you can't have a negative value to the one half because that's a square root of a negative. That's not defined. But in the case where it is defined, then the limit as x approaches negative infinity is again equal to zero because the denominator will just be getting really, really big. It might be really big in the negative direction, but still really, really big. And so it's just going to be some fixed constant divided by a massive number the limit will be zero. Let's try applying that along with our limit laws to evaluate the limit of four plus three divided by root x as x approaches infinity. As we said before, we can split this limit into a sum of limits. The limit as x approaches infinity of four plus the limit as x approaches infinity 
of 3 divided by root x. Root x, of course, is the same as x to the 1 half, if you prefer to write it that way. The limit of 4 as x approaches infinity is certainly 4. x has no bearing on that situation. And by theorem 3.10, we know that the limit of 3 over x to the 1 half as x goes to infinity is equal to 0. And of course, that just agrees with our common sense. The denominator, the square root of x, is just getting arbitrarily large as x goes to infinity. 3 divided by arbitrarily large numbers, that's basically 3 over infinity. It's certainly going to 0. And so this limit is 4. We'll finish with three examples of rational functions, and we'll see some general guidelines for how to deal with these sorts of limits. These are really the most common types of functions where you'll have to evaluate the limit as x going to infinity in most calculus classes. Beginning with the limit of negative 2x squared plus x divided by x cubed minus 4x plus 5 as x goes to infinity. If you just try to substitute infinity into the top and bottom, the numerator is infinity and the denominator is infinity, disregarding any negatives because those don't really matter right now. If we just try to substitute infinity into the top and bottom, we're going to get negative infinity divided by infinity. It's an indeterminate form. However, we can fix that and make this something easier to evaluate if we could move these x's to the denominators. With x going to infinity, if it was in a denominator, then we would have a zero, like one over infinity, that's gonna be zero, as opposed to multiplying by infinity. Now, in order to make that change, we're gonna have to divide the numerator and denominator by the highest degree of x that occurs in this rational function. In this case, that's x to the third. So we'll divide the numerator and denominator by x to the power of three. Then all of our x's will be in denominators and we'll be able to clean this up. So there we go, we're dividing the top and bottom by x cubed. So it's just like multiplying by one since we're doing it to the top and bottom. And once we do that, this is what we get. In the numerator, the x squared divided by x cubed just leaves one factor of x in the denominator, of course, negative two in the numerator. x divided by x cubed is just one over x squared. In the denominator, similar stuff, x cubed divided by x cubed is one, and so on. Now, we don't have any multiplication by x, we just have a bunch of divisions by x. And we can break this into the individual pieces. In the numerator, negative two over x as x goes to infinity is just zero. The denominator is getting really big, the numerator is a fixed constant. Same thing with one over x squared, that's also going to zero. In the denominator, we have one, and then minus four over x squared is going to zero because x squared is getting arbitrarily large, and five over x cubed is going to zero as x goes to infinity for the same reason. So what is the limit? Well, clearly it's zero divided by one, which is just zero. The graph of this function, if you're curious, looks like this. You can see as x goes to infinity, the function is getting closer and closer to zero. As it happens, it behaves the same way as x goes to negative infinity. In fact, for any rational function, it will either have no horizontal asymptotes or it will have two equal horizontal asymptotes. And like I said, we'll see general guidelines for evaluating limits like this in a minute. I just wanna draw your attention to what's going on here. The denominator in this example was a polynomial of a higher degree than the numerator. That's why the denominator ended up dominating the whole thing, and so it ended up just being equal to zero. The numerator was just way too small compared to the denominator. Let's move on to example two, where you may notice the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator. The highest power of x is one in each case. Again, we can evaluate this limit by dividing the numerator and denominator both by the highest power of x that's present in the function. In this case, that is x. If we do that division, this is what we get. 3x divided by x is 3, 1 divided by x is 1 over x, and similarly in the denominator. Now we can break this limit up similar to how we did in the previous problem. In the numerator, the limit of 3 as x goes to infinity is 3, and the limit of 1 over x as x goes to infinity is 0. 
In the denominator, the limit of 2 as x goes to infinity is 2, and the limit of 1 over x as x goes to infinity is 0. Thus, we see the limit of this function is 3 divided by 2. It's actually the ratio of the coefficients of the leading terms, 3x divided by 2x, just gave us 3 over 2. And here's a graph of the function if you're curious. You can see that as x goes to negative infinity and as x goes to positive infinity, the function is getting arbitrarily close to 1 and a half, just as suspected. So in a rational function where the degrees of the numerator and denominator are the same, it's really just about how those leading terms compare. So the limit of such a rational function will just be the ratio of the coefficients of the leading terms. In this case, the leading terms were 3x and 2x. The ratio of the leading coefficients is 3 over 2. Last example. In this example, the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. So you can start to think about what might happen. We'll solve this in a similar way. Divide the numerator and denominator both by the greatest power of x that appears in the function. In this case, that's x squared. So we divide the top and bottom by x squared. And that brings us here. 3x squared divided by x squared is 3. 2x divided by x squared is 2 over x, and so on. And we can start to split this up into its pieces. The limit of 3 will just be 3. The limit of 2 over x as x goes to infinity will be 0. 4 over x squared will be 0. 1 over x will be 0. And 1 over x squared will be 0. So this turns out to be 3 divided by 0. A finite number divided by 0 well, that doesn't exist. And so this limit is actually infinity or doesn't exist, you could simply say. Here's the graph of the function. You can see a little bit as x gets bigger and bigger, the function is getting bigger and bigger. Like I said, for a rational function, if it does have a horizontal asymptote, then it has the same asymptote for positive and negative infinity. But this one doesn't have a horizontal asymptote, and its behavior is actually different as x goes to positive versus negative negative infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, you can see the function is actually approaching negative infinity. So the dividing by the highest power of x is a great way to clean up these limits as x goes to infinity so that you can split them into smaller pieces and then evaluate them. But for rational functions, which are the ratios of polynomials, one polynomial divided by another, there are pretty simple guidelines for evaluating these sorts of limits as we saw in these examples. And here those guidelines are as they appear in Larson's calculus. As we saw, but we'll do a quick recap, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, the denominator dominates, and so the limit is equal to zero as x goes to positive or negative infinity. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the limit of the rational function is the ratio of the leading coefficients, because those leading terms are the dominant ones, the ratio of the coefficients as x goes to infinity or negative infinity that will be the limit. In the last case, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then the limit of the rational function does not exist. It could be veering off to infinity or negative infinity. So that's a bit about limits of functions at infinity. Remember, if the limit of a function as x approaches infinity or negative infinity equals L, then the horizontal line y equals L is called a horizontal asymptote. It's a line that the function gets closer and closer to as x goes to positive positive or negative infinity. All these examples do beg the question, what about functions that aren't rational functions? For example, what if we wanted to find the limit as x goes to infinity of 3x minus 2 over the square root of 2x squared plus 1, or the same limit but with x going to negative infinity? Well, you can use a very similar strategy to what we were just doing to evaluate these limits, and we'll talk about them more in depth in the next lesson. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.